Hello? Where is everybody? <laughs> I cannot hear you, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> okay, let me just type in... In Omega. That something is super weird. Something is super weird. There's a story. It's all made of stories. <laughs> um, let not thy right hand know. That's right, that's the way it goes. Let not thy right hand, thy left hemisphere, know <laughs> what this hemisphere is about. And one of the very conspicuous things with these people is how much they know of what is wrong. The extraordinary articulacy once you begin to discover, begin to be able to hear the nature of the poetry that they're using. Hey. What have you been working on, Tori? Uh, just just uh, stuff for the library and um, that this like mandala art. It's been pretty cool. It's been interesting. Um... Hi guys, I'm here. Oh yes, you are here. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. I was just pitching. <laughs> So I had the pleasure to, to work with Magic Card now multiple times and I, I learned them, connected uh, to them through uh, Block Science, Sargam and Token Engineering because they're basically the ones where uh, yeah, Token Engineers go to when, when things are super complex uh, and, and uh, actually get translations of uh, the design pretty well. So if Ravi, if you want to add some things like how uh, or what what input will, will you need and uh, and then basically we can maybe put uh, bring this down together um, just now to say okay design spec from from this group could help you either provide uh, some mockups or some um, input for the proposal. So um, honestly, so get... mm -hmm. at this time, Sabnam, uh, I, I want to listen a little more. Um, right. I, I, do, I will, I think, at the end of this call, hopefully have enough enough information to say what more I need. Mm -hmm. uh, right okay, right cool. now, I'm still, uh, yeah, I'm just still digesting. I think, I think if I... Okay, okay, cool. So, good. So, yeah. Okay, so good. So there, there are um, three points that we can go deeper into. Uh, let me just, uh, let's just uh, briefly... Uh, ask the group. Hey, what's no. uh, Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and uh, so you know, for what's been happening with the uh, mandala, um, mm -hmm. basically, there's like two different like things to like form this kind of like cool little mandala. Anyways, three points of reference, you know, kind of like what we do in the uh, Omega uh, curation and or a um, like your antidote or what I'm calling a, a poetic expression. So it, it could be like, mm -hmm. you know, reference to music or whatever, as we get more mm -hmm. creative with it or whatever, can be what what forms the first uh, spore uh, for the mandala. Mm -hmm. And then um, what I've been doing, which becomes the game which I'm testing out with my friends mm -hmm. over on Imaginarium, is that I get them, I put them in, in doing this uh, spears of them, and then that creates elements for the mandala. And and it's kind of like that bead game where it's association of what right. the, the, the beads are. So like, for, for instance, you know, like 
uh, what I'm doing with my friends is I have the first um, sketches of what what is I refer to a Koken, my little pyramid uh, um, character that I that I used that was me and uh, Curry Hobo developed. Anyways, his first sketches after me and him talked about this idea, we had an Imaginarium, and we then I was like, oh, I need we need to get this character, and I I went into this rat, and then. He did some sketches and then he sent it to me and I'm like, okay, we got to do this. And then we, we formed this whole like little character and I didn't know what I was going to use it for, but that's that's <laughs> just like an example of where we could start uh, this form on that. So then I, I asked my friends to, to give me uh, references to these three uh, poetic references that I make via my channel, right? And mm -hmm. most of the people, my friends, would kind of get what I'm what I'm saying because I talk about all this kind of stuff all the time with them, right? So I want to see what they would like. You you go through the feed and then you 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 put the references in there. And I'm like embedding more, uh, like hyperlinking the Spore Mandala, right? <laughs> because I have like this vision later is like the <laughs> NFT helps you like navigate Web three, and so like whatever your MyCO wow. network is, you plug it into to your 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 dashboard and then you get like updates from imaginarium see what's going on in tech and blah 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 whatever else you want to like form uh the different shapes of the mandala and how you could like form your your um dynamic energy flow uh mandala and like and it could like even like we could like make it rotate in you know these kind of um uh, interesting yeah. geometry that I've been exploring about, you yeah. know, cycles and rotations yeah. and reflecting yeah, yeah. the real stuff. Yeah. So, Ravi, brace That's yourself. <laughs> I think, I, I don't know, uh, but I think for me, this is the most creative project I've been, uh, I've had the pleasure to Sabnam, see. Every, every time we work with you, there's these crazy mirror boards that have to go through. <laughs> 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 this one actually uh this it looks one, like figma uh, kept but, in uh... shape. no no this this one <laughs> was kept in kept in uh, check by nick uh actually excellent. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> uh, other, otherwise you would have found another one but uh um like this is this has become the main uh theme or, or the main design and basically also the the connective uh element more or less the self-discovery game and i think you will need more input but just so you see the parts uh, of the puzzle you you know the you know this uh, uh crypto economics flower right yep yeah so um basically from the crypto economic foundations of crypto economics all of these uh sciences are actually into resource allocation and coordination problem which oh. is what crypto economics wants to solve and especially this shows everyone who comes into crypto economics and it think oh that's just you know uh cryptography uh, slashed uh, with um reverse game theory like yes <laughs> but not only so and and you know like who's who's behind uh, or, or some door openers like trends ai optimization control theory uh, Zargam, industrial systems and systems engineering control theory, AI operations research management science, and then many more like uh, Sherman, economics, uh, philosophy, political science, like people who have laid the foundation, uh, um, they, they've seen uh, all, or they have appreciated all these um, and, and seeing all these patterns, right, that uh, made them uh, realize, hey, this isn't something new, it's just, you know, doing it really <laughs> uh, transdisciplinary for real. Anyways, and this library is basically um, riffing off of this and, and uh, basically ask people to curate their most uh, enlightening pieces of, uh, readings or videos or even, I don't know, music, could be anything that uh, helped them to actually make sense of the space. And then we asked them to annotate. And uh, one of the first, uh, of course, 
um, curations we got like this. I mean, we have um, we have one collective creation. Omega, I can share you the link, but I think it's better if, if we actually curate it once for you uh, uh, or created once for this design spec. But we have a collection how how it could become. And uh, Zargam also did one curation that is you know exactly like how we wanted or how we envisioned it's a it's a super surprising one <laughs> you know he could have chosen so many obvious ones but he chose a very very special one a very deep one about what information actually is um, and also added the very personal annotation so this is exactly what what we want like this personal uh, anecdotal almost annotation instead of a typical abstract of a paper or of a, of a book that you could have, but you can have this abstract everywhere on the internet, right? Um, but actually getting a super personal anecdotal annotation that helps uh, that a token engineer or practitioner shares with people uh, of how they, how that piece helped them make sense of some portions of this flower uh, with respect to crypto economics. Mm, that, I think that is pretty clear, but uh, what uh, this Imaginarium uh, or creative flow uh, made um, off of this, I think we can go deeper, uh, but these four mandalas are actually created uh, with the words that the creator uses in this anecdotal uh, annotation. And apparently there are some more ideas of how these personal mandalas of the curators can help them connect to the pieces of the flower or the petals of the flower, but also connect uh, to other curators and other learners and so on. So that part uh, needs maybe a bit more specification, etc. But uh, as you see, there are really good notes and the uh, Satori and Within the Vacuum are the ones who are working on these uh, visuals that are made from from words that the people are using to create. Okay, so that's one big part. Um, yeah, the glass beads came can be um, an example which also um, basically people play with association. I think this associative links uh, is a big one. Max, do you remember the, um, the kind of content, not management, but content review system we were talking about with the, with the journalist who was uh, doing that work on Bitcoin Island? Where she yeah. wanted the interactive, almost um, intuitive descent into this massive sea of uh, information. So not not guided, but but actually completely intuitive. And you went in whatever direction that you wanted to to find the next thing that made sense or the next thing that made sense. Uh, mm. So that each each time you enter this this kind of sea of of knowledge, you have a different journey depending on the set of questions you start. With. I think I think this might be a this might be a a similar um, process, and I know how much you enjoy dealing with that. So I think Max, you're have fun <laughs> Max there. is here as well. Max is here, yeah. Yeah, cool. Whenever I I, I basically had Shabnam somewhere, it's always some crazy thing, flowers, <laughs> and map and map. Uh, I, I'm into the data structure, so just give me like five minutes to onboard. I just joined like a couple of minutes ago, and mm -hmm. then maybe I can spit out something meaningful. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, the data structure. Let me see. Okay. The most structured thing we have is actually MZ curator profile. So oh, one, one more thing, maybe it's already in here. So the, the flower uh, or the, the um, 
these are the sections, if you will, or the categories, roughly, right? Um, what else do we have? Ah, yeah, and this transdisciplinarity. Um, like we want to show, or the curator has to somehow um, make, because they know how this, what they are sharing, actually connects to the other domains. Like they, they are the knower of transdisciplinarity. Or what is interesting, what could be super interesting is, one curator says uh, this uh, resource connects to uh, is uh, mainly computer science, but connects to systems engineering, uh, law, and game theory. And what would be interesting is a second curator comes in and actually adds uh, from their perspective that it's actually also AI and optimization, and that's why and their personal annotations. So basically. Um, it is the curator and their view of um, how this resource that they're sharing is transdisciplinary. It could like the consilience is the um, jumping of knowledge so, uh, uh, what together. What is the end goal of the, of the whole platform protocol or what it is? Well, it is to create a library that isn't a list of links. Uh, it is to create a library that, number one, puts forth the value of the transdisciplinarity of this space. Like normally, because in academia, you are rewarded for remaining in your silos. Um, that's why something like crypto economics would never emerge uh, in academia, but could only have emerged here um, in, in cyberspace. And this library should yeah, celebrate that, as well as actually uh, create the links such that we don't have a linear list, but this connection, the, the actually it's not a matrix, but a tensor. Um, well, what do you... And, what, and the right second off. part, yeah, and the second part is the, how do you navigate through this should give you two, two more values. Number one is the novelty part, that's why the self-discovery game is what emerged, uh, you know, from from um, the creatives. And the second part is while you're navigating, uh, can you make human connections? And that's basically what, you know, until now we think uh, will come through the personal annotations. And then we can look into here or, or more questions. Um, no, it, may, it makes perfect sense, but uh... I guess we can get a lot of uh, value into looking into back into the social networks and web two layer, uh, since what you just described is basically um, a relevancy engine and curation engine. And right. this we were working with Medium.com, like when they were uh, shifting from uh, like a manual actual mm -hmm. people curators to more of an automation thing. So right. it's basically a, um, a lot of linear algebra. The question is, it's not about um, how to do that. It's, it's the question if we want to have this process automated or do we want to keep it like a decentralized manual process? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the biggest, big, because that basically will tell us the which approach should we take from the beginning. Mm. In terms of the UX of navigation, unfortunately, people, if we, if we're looking for a mass adoption, we need to follow the pattern, which you like people used to. And mm, the yeah. major thing to have user retention and like length of the test session is basically the um, criteria of relevancy of the content. If the content is relevant to you and it's every single piece of the content is relevant and interesting and you, uh, and engine propose you, uh, the path, which is not linear and can bring you from, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. AI and, and computer science domain to, uh, for example, you know, design and uh, cognitive psychology one, but you should not actually perform the navigation. The engine should understand what is, what right. to propose you next out of right. like, performance on top of this particular unit of content. This is how basically most of the social networks and ad advertising engines, uh, engines work. So 
even if it will be like a plain text or like a mark simple markdown, if the relevancy is very high and the engine knows what to propose you next, then ye, we will meet this KPI and the goal that you just described. I agree. The, the relevancy though, um, just, just adding here some, like the more, more or less the, the thesis or the relevancy is not just uh, content wise. Relevancy but really in terms of subject, mm -hmm. like subject, subjective yeah. kind of thing of relevancy. If you're into, mm -hmm. Uh, let's say, um, so I don't want to make a decision every single time where I want to go and explore because yeah. like making decisions is very kind of um, heavy on the cognition of the user, right? So I need to make the decisions or I want to explore this or maybe I should go here first. So the good uh, kind of thing will, will figure out what you want more and maybe after each content unit you will have two or three options, like you have on YouTube, for example. Right. right? Mm -hmm. like, this is the exact way those engine works, and they mm -hmm. achieve the, the same result that you want. It's just user never users are never bothering like how they and why they there, but it's basically yeah. more fun and more engaging way to surf through the content, right? And to right. For the sake of entertainment or learning or whatever. Gotcha. So everyone Meet Max around me from from Magic Part who really help to bring these <laughs> crazy mirror boards uh, down to super pragmatic and, and smart solutions based on their background and and experience, uh, which is a <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like Ghostbusters. To <laughs> be, be, be honest, it's not that, that, that I just have experience explaining Doctor Zargo yeah. kind of crazy visions for a long time. Exactly. Whenever I see MZ somewhere, I, my brain switches <laughs> to exploratory mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will, I think we, we're almost running out of time. Um, two things, like one thing I want to show and then, uh, um, but a big but about the budget that is the left, so that uh, you know, Max, it's for actually doing the proposal. So basically, if you just look at the data structure or model, uh, it, it is simple. It will be the curator, then some. So we want to get uh, as much unique uh, perspective or, or links as possible, things that you wouldn't find in. Wikipedia or as mentioned, like uh, on Goodreads or some review websites. Uh, so what kind of uh, lenses they have and right? what is their background and then something uh, to share could be, I don't know, their favorite food or their favorite food for thought, like a, uh, like a citation. Maybe these things will change in the future, the more we, we experience what are uh, really triggering um, insights but then uh, curator's name the title of the uh, of the curation the link to it uh, and the abstract like one would expect the second part that is uh, uh, specific is this consilient space uh, this one again we could likely going through this with you uh, we would have deeper insights how to do it better uh, and the third part is the anecdotal annotation like the we yeah, ask them not just for the abstract but actually why they chose this uh, specifically really uh, as personal or as uh, contextual as it can get right and here basically uh, Zargam just added <laughs> two more curations, if you, if you will, right? Uh, and there are others. As I mentioned, we have uh, this, um, we have made a collective curation test, um, but that needs some cleaning up as well. Uh, in a sense, I would put it into this format. So you have more uh, example and we have a prototype uh, more or less of the how this library could look like. And 
that would be one thing that I can uh, go in and I will ask the group to just uh, support to get you this m more of these curations basically, right? But Zargam was the first, if you will, uh, outside <laughs> or, or, or uh, first early adopter curator. I will call up uh, Steve probably today or tomorrow and I'll torture him a bit about that. But uh, okay. sort of as you all, implementation wise, uh, the biggest question to me is basically how do we train this machine learning model to decide what is relevant next for a particular user right now? It's, it's basically That's what I wanted to ask you actually. Doesn't it always start uh, manual and humans actually yeah, that's do called, that's the called curation? The that's called a hot start in a machine learning and relevancy uh, structure engines. It's when you uh, actually first ask, you can show this flower to the user first and ask him what he likes the most. And you use it as an initial matrix to start building this tensor of uh, his preferences, right? So uh, each time uh, you have some like very objective uh, user behavior metrics of the user, how long does he stare at the content unit, what is the, you know, scroll depth, it can be whatever, right? Uh, and some imperatives like like button clicks and stuff like this. And then like the moment this, it, and it's like almost like a bub sub way of uh, understanding the user. So the moment you uh, engine understand, the software understand that the user is near the conclusion of his consumption of this particular unit of content, we need to decide what to propose him next. And that proposition should not be kind of smart or just pick this. We need to hit an actual strike of the subjective relevancy to that user right now, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. So for example, if you Shabnam, you're into this, like, you know, things that I usually see on, on your mirror boards and notions, like, you know, some complex, uh, pretty fuzzy, and at the same time, math heavy things. So I can tell that you are into the data science and you into the creativity and stuff like this. So I need to understand what to propose you, what might be interesting for you after you just concluded this, you know, consumption. Uh, because if I will, for example, propose you something like, a, I don't know, the problem of automated market makers in DeFi, you probably will be uh, disappointed, right? Of that relevancy, you will scroll next. Uh, and this is, this will happen. It's the question of, uh, as, I, as I said at the beginning, it's a question of how we want to train this model. If we want to train it uh, manually from users, like going simple surveys every single right. time, they come, that's one thing. If we want to go like all in and create like an actual big um, AI model that will train like and stuff like this, that's the other approach because it either a very kind of tricky and simple but heavy database of interactions mm. and stuff like this yeah. or that's an actual ai where you uh, you basically to uh, build the, the tensors of the king and queen linear algebra and this kind of magic right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the kind of surprise like you know is it possible to to include in the ai the notion of surprise to to, to you know, um be, there, there can be some random effects and it's not even possible that's almost mandatory because the good model learns every single time the way you decide if the model is good is by the percentage of the mistake this model does so in order to keep this uh, ai in shape, you need to continuously uh, propose something unexpected by the AI to make a decision upon. So, and you actually learning from these decisions when you propose something like, like you said, surprise. And this is how you increase the relevancy output of the engine. And, and what about and in, in user experience, the, um, the whole idea of surprise is actually one that is quite beneficial. So if, if, you know, everything you get is of the same kind and you're not getting anything new or out of the box, then, then the experience tends to be kind of boring and tends to end in, in mm. basically 
dropping off. So that yeah, that, that's very much part yeah. of Yeah, like time. you buy one item and you the next days for three days you see <laughs> more of that item on every web page you go. The the most yeah, useless the, the joys. <laughs> yeah, exactly the joys because we want the opposite. We want the opposite. We want the user exactly. But but I think like uh, I think the big question is and uh, like do we have anything to train from this? No, like I think that we are left to the human training part, and then there the question goes deeper, and that's where I wanted to actually to to uh, cut short or or uh, expectation wise also Max and Ravi, um, like. Where do we stand with this? We we had we have uh, gained the support of token entering uh, or tech holders for going for this library uh, for this prototype version and see what we want it to be. And this is for that we get we got 15k or something. And uh, Marit isn't here, uh, but I think yeah we we have 4k or so uh, left from it. And what we want to do is a proposal uh, for the implementation. And what we would love to have is number one, like have you guys on board as people who can uh, really implement this without uh, making it too simple, <laughs> right? Capturing, and uh, I think that a few really, not a few, like I think uh, the, the group here made amazing and very surprising uh, discoveries with respect to, okay, how, what, what is the novelty? Uh, how could we do this? Like, how do people uh, use this library, learn, but also learn each other uh, and create connections, learn themselves. So that's super interesting. And the goal would be like, whatever, it might not be enough or so, uh, but definitely at the very least that we have an estimate for you if you get this proposal, how much should we include for design and development? Um, and not the, the creative design that, you know, I, I believe the ones who contributed will continue as well to be uh, and to accompany it, but really to design it as a, as a web page and <laughs> or, or website uh, with, with everything that belongs uh, and the implementation of it. And again, uh, you know, we can do this in, in phases as well, that the implementation is the first MVP with a model and with a business model or a sustainability model, including tech, um, that. And if you can, uh, if it would work out, I find exactly how much we have left. Like if you could have, and maybe I'm asking too much already, you tell me, but if you could have, uh, one or two mockups um, that will make it number one, that will highlight the, the creative um, input that we gathered in, in, uh, in, in this first version. Um, so, uh, to really highlight it and get basically funds for actual implementation of it. So have you ever heard of the ImageNet? Yeah, the training set. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can propose oh. to have something like ImageNet for something related to crypto. Ooh. Because in order to uh, fundraise for a model, right, you need to capture mm -hmm. the model. Yeah, and we need to. The, the problem was. Um, the data scientists and machine learning engineers cool. right. uh, very pricey right and i for example can throw in some diagram and like requirements document how that should look like out of mm -hmm. and but in order to implement you need to at least like a hundred hours or something and that's already like uh, a lot right and yeah. uh, so the thing is that i would propose to describe the idea very well mm -hmm. in order to source funding and yeah. without going for any mvp because even mvp in the machine learning and AI, ai you know spaces are yeah. pretty costly it's very very costly so exactly then what i would do for the mvp i would 
take something like, you know, um, an article or any unit of content that the community prefers best. Mm -hmm. Or it can be an article or whatever, right? And then uh, repeat the image game. Mm -hmm. Right, image, image net challenge. So because it's very, very similar. The way you train it's very, very similar. But the image now, it's just, you know, recognizing the picture is more of a computer vision challenge, but you can take this approach and make it and adjust it towards the relevancy, right? Uh, right. To do that, you need gotcha. on top of the actual asset, you need to throw in a, an extra layer, which is basically a social graph of your interactions between the users. So you need to have this layer of a social network for example uh there is you and you are friends with what i will call friends or you, you have context mm -hmm. or relation to me zargam and ravi right zargam is mm -hmm, all about mm -hmm. design i'm all about the implementation of the pricey projects and ravi all about like invoicing people for example right so <laughs> he the doesn't way, agree <laughs> yeah, the way you will be um interacting with the content, let's say that would be uh, an, an articles, right? Because there is an yeah. some idea which is easily described in the end, like a bottom line of the article. Mm -hmm. uh, your relevancy, the, the things that are relevant to you, you know, tell me who your friends are, I'll tell you who you are, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I got you. You will have a modifier applied to your relevancy score uh, depending on who you have in your friends, right? So, and that that can boost initial relevancy times, but then you would be actually forced to train your model out. And the only way to train it is out of the usage of your model by people, you know, you know, this AI thing, you constantly need to consume data in order to learn, right? So you need to have a user base that's not just coming in right one time and just click something, but you need to have an actual retention and actual length of the se session so user will you know consume i don't know like 10 mm -hmm. units of content in order to efficiently efficiently train this model so i would say unless you find a very solid idea i would not start this because okay. you know budget can can fly out of the window very very quick quickly when we, when we tried to automate curation back in the days, mm -hmm. we had mm -hmm. negotiations with medium.com and then there was like seven digit numbers because how <laughs> big of a problem it is and they wanted to buy. <laughs> so um, manual curation is way simpler, right? But that then you depend on the user base and the usage. Automated curation is much more faster and you need to have less users. And if you yeah. have proper UX and this, you know consumption of the unit content is fairly fast, then the AI can learn faster. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's uh, let that let's let that all sink in. I think the session was already super super helpful to uh, yeah. uh, bring it together. Uh, the way these things are usually done in order to achieve relevancy for the user, you have a network, a platform where you have a simple algorithm of relevancy, which is very empirical, right? So mm -hmm. let's say geographical or uh, your preferences that you just set yourselves or the timeline or whatever, right? This, it, it should have some relevance. And the unit con uh, content, content unit has a traits, which you track. And you start to train your model on your existing user base without even proposing like this is the relevancy and stuff it's very hard to start relevancy on the on the absence of the data set you need to have a data set to train your model so usually it's that yeah. you have a network it produces a data set you start to push the record button or you create a data set like in a period of time then you create an mvp of the relevancy engine then you deploy it and it starts to train himself even more no, I think the first thing that we will need is really, as you say, like first find a way to fund trace and uh, also crowdsource uh, uh, the, 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 the data, 
right? Decoration and so on. So uh, that's number one. Uh, and like I said, uh, that's another uh, actually challenge. You know, we've been around now for, uh, I am around now for five years and seriously you know, since three years, like fully token engineering saying, okay, we need more token engineers. And I couldn't be more, uh, you know, more disappointed uh, uh, after so many years to just still have only a handful of practitioners that are always, you know, uh, bo booked out and and no time and so on. So there's a That's huge a bottleneck. Issue. That's a key issue of the crypto industry because a lot of people like, I don't know how much we're in the industry, like maybe six years or something building those for the, ma the major thing that i see people tend to think that the blockchain and the web3 is very very complicated but the moment you face uh ai machine learning and advanced things like data science and data engineering this is the this is the exact moments when you realize that the, like doing an integration with metamask is just a development it's not any different from like integrating with stripe pay, stripe payment model yeah it's different in, in its own way, but it's, you know, it's just another framework. Uh, the only thing that is really complicated on a blockchain is basically the virtual machines themselves and coming up with the compilers and the cryptographic itself. But it's very, very low level. So very few people in crypto actually touch it. When people build dApps, these dApps, they lack the things that we are already used to in a Web2 that this convenience provided by the big tech right. team. and because of that we spend a lot of time in instagram TikTok, medium.com and twitter and stuff like this because those platforms know what we are interested in and mm. uh, the problem is is nothing new it just never was implemented in crypto yet that's true uh, interesting i, I, have, <laughs> interesting a, I have a slight counterpoint that. i yeah. have a slight slight counterpoint to that I think I think Max, um, the 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 technology itself is not more complicated, but I think what uh, is complicated, and I think token economics is is very much at the center of this, is basically how do you it's it's, it's in incentive mechanisms and in emergent systems, and I think that's 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 really to me the novelty of of crypto is not not you know decentralization per se. Building a model is is uh, way easier. Building incentives the is, is model the AI model that will create a, like a tensor of like a freaking I don't know how much data points and and being able to navigate it fast. So it's a big data data science heavy computational one projects that require you to even maintain it to run a server that usually costs around four mils euros. But so, there are people who are trained to do that. I think token, token engineering is not. Token engineering is that place. Yeah, that's the thing. It's about creating a self-sufficient, self-reinforcing economical system that will be decentralized at the same time as uh, effective for the participants at, at the same time yep. as well. So uh, I see the challenge. I, I understand that this is a complex thing, but you need to be an economical, you know, a, a data scientist at the same time. When we're talking about the implementation of something like a, right. a machine learning and AI, this is the the whole different space, right? It's a, it's a lot of things where people make it. The problem with this is to onboard those people to crypto because those people they make ridiculous amount of money. Like, and I'm I'm saying ridiculous. Imagine uh, a data science department who increase efficiency of the uh, I don't know diamond produ production kind of holding group. Like if you able to create with something that will boost this efficiency for one percent, you're already saving billions of dollars. And uh, or name uh, vessel shipment, like you know this kind of. Thing. You can train your model to understand the winds and the currents and like stuff like this, and you can save some. It, it's insane amount of money. So those people are very very valuable to like, and and most of them are hired established by the businesses and so on. Yeah. So it's, it's challenging. It's very okay. challenging, and uh, it's not impossible. And it's definitely something that we put our uh, feet there for some time, and we did something that I may be proud of it. But 
it wasn't it's, it was not a great success it, it was some sort of a success but it was not like you know to the moon or something yeah, because mm. it's, it's it's maybe like twenty thousand people on earth who's capable of doing such cool things <laughs> No, I agree with you, and, and we see it here again as well. Like the thing that we need for implementation is uh, the, the, as you say, the web infrastructure that needs to enable the data, data harvesting, and all of that. And then you have the social layer that you need to capture and all of that, and then you have the chance to. Uh, play with the incentives or in parallel, but without having all the infrastructure data and the connections. Uh, yeah, it boils know. down to having yeah. a data set, having an interface for totally. a people to manually train this model by interacting with this data set through gotcha. this interface. And gotcha. then you basically spend some time training a model and then you check if the relevancy is high enough for you. So my suggestion will be this before, like, let's, uh, le let's this group come up with something that is, you know, includes all of the insights of today, and then uh, we we share it uh, with you. You you just look at it and and uh, play it back, and and we'll see we'll see how how far the tech holders wanna go or, or can go. Okay, we might need to break it down into more uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know. Uh, let's see. But that was super super helpful. Okay. So, I think uh, so too. Let me, like I'm thinking of it, how to approach it with like a very very low effort first. So what I would actually do, I would do something like Wikipedia, right? Mm. If mm -hmm. I would do a user profile where a user can tell uh, the AI which topics or fields the user prefers, right? And then uh, we can mark each article or con con content unit with a similar traits. So then we can uh, recognize a pattern, which users with which pattern goes to which link, by which links. It will be just a hyperlinked uh, mm -hmm. table. Like, yeah. but, but then somehow uh, following their their navigation in the beginning yeah, as well. And like, we will be which recording navigation and do the comparison the, yeah. with their preferences and the traits that the content unit have. So yeah. we will be able to build initial relevancy for a specific type of the user, right? It's not that mm -hmm. this user, because the relevancy is the kind of broadcasting live thing when we're talking about the actual efficient thing, which like, I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. TikTok or Instagram runs or, or YouTube. It's a real time thing. But in mm -hmm. order to start training your model, you can do it like, a, a, you know, step by step. So basically, mm -hmm. you have your interest, you, you, this is your route, this is how you explore. And we can even map this thing visually to show people how, how, how you interact. This will be a pretty fun experience, I guess, to learn what is your pattern and how you move through the content. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. require any kind of compl complex UI to interact with. You just need to have the user profile again, a trace assigned to the content unit, and then we need a software that will track it, right? The machine learning model that will just mm -hmm. report it and, and do these decisions. And we still have people here who are actually interested in those traces because they create art from it. So that, I think that there, there we have actual people who are interested in, uh, uh, you know, being the human looking at those traces and making, uh, creating mm -hmm. some insights of it. So that's also an additional uh, data qualifier. Question uh, that. that have covered before we will be able to create a proposal for such an MVP is how much and uh, who will be doing the lack work of mapping this, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there should be a content that is a hy hyperlinked, like a, just like a Wikipedia, You're like for the sake of simplicity, imagine a Wikipedia mm -hmm. article. Mm -hmm. There should be someone who is uh, basically clicking on the links and then telling that this word is the link, this thing is the link, right? So we need to hyperlinked uh, content table, con data set, basically. First, mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. is a lot of manual work, like a mm -hmm. lot. We need someone to do that, and mm -hmm. that 
build on top of that a software with machine learning that will like uh, start to train itself. Okay, so I'm calling, I'm just adding some manual hyperlink annotators and so on. But we, we have that, number one, and we also have that as people who, who want to learn from this library. I think they will be also the ones who will add, maybe not the, the curation or qualitative part, but they will create uh, basically um, navigational data. And, and those are the ones who we could also confront with those uh, two, three questions. And if I think uh, if you have a token, if you have a token, that's a good way to incentivize users. Right. So you know there's a lot of projects who run quizzes and stuff like this. So if you can have a 